<clears throat> from the very beginning of time, God is, has established that he is God and there is no other. We have accounts of the beginning of time and of creation in which God carefully laid the foundation to show forth that nothing happens without his righteous and holy purpose in mind. We're told in the Psalms, it says, The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. And Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians, he said, But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Therefore, on this foundation, we can reason that God's word is true, and what he speaks and what he purposes cannot be thwarted. So with those, those thoughts in mind, I wanted to talk about the called of God. And Sister Melissa almost talked about that this morning. <laughs> but the Lord was able, able to show me some things that, that encouraged me in this. And so I want to share those things with you tonight. Um, called, I, I wanted to kind of get an idea of what this word meant and... Um, I thought about it being appointed or set apart. And we can see the Lord working in this manner in the scriptures. <clears throat> Isaiah said this was a promise that the Lord had given to his people. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, and thou art mine. The Lord called his people by name. And this took my thoughts to Jesus. Whenever Jesus was in the earth, he did this with his apostles. He called them individually by name. He went to them. He didn't send a messenger or a courier, somebody that would give them an invitation. He called them by their name. <clears throat> and he was showing out, he was setting an example of how of what the nature of God was in this, that he called his apostles by name. In fact, he said this to them in John 15, 16. He said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. <clears throat> and again, Paul wrote, whereunto he called you by our gospel. This is how the calling goes out. It's by the preaching of the gospel. This is how the Lord calls his people. And it's to obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ that we can obtain this glory. God has a purpose in calling his people. We're told that Paul was called to be an apostle. He was sent to the Gentile church. So this was the purpose of God calling Paul. We've been called out of the world. We're in the world, but not of the world. We've been called to be separate from the world. There are those who have been called out of Babylon, and we have come out because the Lord has called us out of Babylon. Amen. This calling of God is a holy calling. The call of God is like no other call. There are competing calls that we can hear that go out that are not of God. And what makes the call of God different from the rest is that it is a holy calling. And it's sent by the righteous and almighty God. <clears throat> Who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, Paul wrote to Timothy, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So it's a holy calling. It's a righteous calling. And we know all things work together for the good of them that love God and to them that are the called according Amen. to his purpose. For a long time, I missed that little word, the, but it's the called mm -hmm. according to his Amen. purpose. Mm -hmm. So God works all things for the good of his people. So if you're like Abraham and you've been asked to leave your familiar homeland, remember, God works all things for the good of those who love him and those who are the called. Uh -huh. If you are Gideon and God calls you to battle an army with a little bitty army and this army you're battling against is so big it looks like grasshoppers, they're so vast, remember God works all things 
for to those who love him and those who are the called. If you are like the prophet Jeremiah and you've been given a message to talk about the things that God is giving you to a people who will not listen and will not believe, remember, God will work all things for the good of them that love him and for them who are the called. If you find yourself in a dungeon cell at the midnight hour after being beaten, remember, God works all things for the good of those who are the called. If you find yourself speaking to the leader of a large country, remember that God works all things together for the good of them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. If you find yourself speaking to the religious leaders of the day, like Stephen, and they aren't listening, in fact, they're going to kill you because of what you said, remember that God works all things together for the good of them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. We are not just called out of something, but we are called to something. We are to make our calling and election sure. We have been given the materials and resources needed to build upon the foundation that God has laid in Christ Jesus to make our calling and election sure. We're told, for according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, God has purposed that we labor alongside him. He's given us the resources. He's given us the ability to do this because he's called us to do this. And we can hang the weight of our soul on the call of God, because he is faithful. God is faithful by whom ye were called under the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. <clears throat> we also, this call has liberated us. We have been called unto liberty. We've been, we've been taken out from the bondage that we were in in sin, and we've been liberated in Christ Jesus because God has called us, and he has placed us there. We are now free to serve God, and it's indeed a liberty that we can now know that we have this understanding in Christ. We have liberty to serve God. We have liberty to draw near to God and learn of him. And this liberty that we have enables us to hear the master when he calls us and to refuse the false callings that we hear as well. So, brethren, if you here today or any of you listening on the recordings are hearing this and you love the Lord and your heart yearns for the rich and abundant things of God, it's because you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. If you're able to look back on your journey and see that you have made progress, it is because God has called you and you have been given ears to hear his voice. Amen. Amen. Our hope and our confidence are strengthened when we realize that the God who has called us is the same one who has established all things, and without him there would be nothing. He is the same one who spoke all of creation into existence and raised his own son from the dead. He is the same one that has called you unto himself. So brethren, we can take heart and strengthen ourselves with this truth. You are the called of God. So walk worthy of God who has called you unto his kingdom and glory. And there's coming a day when he'll call us by our new name. And we'll be given that stone that nobody else will know. It will just be something that we have with our Lord. This call is very personal. It is something that the, that the Lord has sent out. And he's made provision for those who can hear him calling to come unto him. So, brethren, I encourage you with this, that you are the called of God. If you love him and you love his appearing and you're looking for that appearing. And we're looking forward to hearing more about the Lord this evening. So have open ears, brethren, and open hearts to receive the call of God. Amen.